Good morning, Reverend Kim here um, from Riverview United Church and Nine Mile River United Church in East Hans, coming to you this morning for worship from my living room in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia. Um, I am in my living room this morning, so children might be coming and going, dogs and cats coming and going. Um, that's the beauty of our work from home. Uh, kids have gone out for a walk now with the dog, but we might hear them come back in a little bit later. Um, I see there's at least one person on. Please say hi if you uh, are so inclined this morning, and I hope more of you can join us as as the time goes on with the, with worship today. I have a full worship service planned for us this morning, um, including singing uh, alone with no accompaniment again, but that's okay. Uh, God doesn't care. God is just happy that we are together and worshiping and praising with one another. Um, I'm going to start as people start to gather in uh, with some announcements and a welcome. Um, I do welcome you on behalf of Elmsdale Cooperative Ministry. We are Cooperative Ministry of Riverview United Church and Nine Mile River United Church, one in Elmsdale, one in Nine Mile River, and I'm the minister for both. We are part of the United Church of Canada, which is a Protestant religion here in Canada that was formed in 1925 as a sort of amalgamation or coming together of Methodists and Presbyterians and Congregationalists. And uh, together we worship God. We worship God who loves us all. Oh, somebody's coming back in the room. What did you forget? Just come in, go out. Thank you. <laughs> So I wanted to share a bit about children's time. Um, I do. I am going to read a story for you today during children's time in case there's any young people watching with us. Um, but I also am going to post after this video an incredible story time uh, led by my friend uh, Dana Party and her daughter um, down at... Um, uh, St. John's in Fall River United Church. Uh, they've recorded the most fun and incredible children's time for you and I'll be posting those on our, our website because they're just awesome. But I will share a story during children's time today. I want to remind everybody that um, I'll be doing daily reflections at 10 a.m. every morning until all of this is over. A time for us to be together, to be with you. I'll share some scripture, some prayers, maybe a spiritual practice. Uh, my plan is to get up early every day and see what the Spirit speaks to me and, and go from there and plan it from there. Um, every evening, as I started last night, uh, just around before bed, depending on what time that is, probably around 9 30, 10 o'clock, um, I'll be offering a meditation of some kind or a guided relaxation, something that comes more from my contemplative tradition and my spiritual practices as a yogi and a meditator. I'll also let you know about our e-newsletter that we have been sending out. You can find a link to it further down on our Facebook. I invite you to um, join that by clicking the subscribe button. Once you read it, it's there. Uh, that will be sent out probably uh, at least once a month, maybe more. I'll also mention today that today's hymns are all from the public domain. We're working on our licensing so that we can use hymns from more voices and Voices United online in streaming, making sure that the publishers um, get their copyright all intact. So we have a, a license that we can print and have stuff in worship, but not for streaming. And so I've pulled songs from the public domain, and I think uh, they'll be familiar to most of you. Finally, today's liturgy, liturgy um, is being used from Celebrate God's Presence, which is a book of services from the United Church of Canada. So as we begin our worship this morning, I'd like to acknowledge place. I'd like to acknowledge that in this space, uh, in my home in Dartmouth, Nova Scotia, and in our two churches in East Hans, we are worshiping, living, working on lands that are by law the unceded territory of the Mi'kmaq people. May we live with respect on this land and in peace and friendship with its people. May that be our commitment to one another. Our gathering hymn is verse 3 from O Come, O Come, Emmanuel. You might say, wait, isn't that an Advent hymn? It is, but it speaks of day spring, it speaks of Emmanuel, and that will make sense a little bit more uh, further along in the service. So here we go. O come thou day spring, come and cheer our spirits by thine advent here. Disperse the gloomy clouds of night and death's dark shadows put to flight. Rejoice, rejoice, Emmanuel shall come 
unto thee, O Israel. And I found a candle. It's not a Christ candle, but it's a candle. And any time that we light a light, we light it to remind ourselves of the light that's inside each and any, every one of us. To us as Christians, that light is the light of Jesus Christ. I light this candle to remind us of the light of Jesus Christ that's with us in this time of worshiping together. I don't know if we'll be able to see it, but it's lit. Know that it's lit. Let me see if I put it right there. You can see the little flicker of the flame, maybe. Our call to worship. We are gathered to worship God. We have come seeking comfort, inspiration, community with one another, and some insight. We have come to open ourselves to the power of God's presence in our midst. We have come to offer up the seasons and turnings in our lives and to get, ask God's help in our learning and in our growing. And so let us pray. In joy and in trouble, help us, gracious God, to trust in your love, to serve your purpose, and to praise your name. Amen. The opening hymn that I chose for today, um, our psalm, I'll give you a little spoiler alert, our psalm is Psalm 23 today about um, walking beside still waters and laying down in green pastures and so in the garden sounded like a, a good choice for this morning as we think about walking with Jesus. I come to the garden alone while the dew is still on the road. And the voice I hear falling on my ear, the Son of God discloses. And He walks with me, and He talks with me, and He tells me I am His own. And the joy we share as we tarry there, none of He speaks and the sound of his voice is so sweet the birds hush their singing and the melody that he gave to me within my heart is ringing. You know this part, sing with me. And he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other has ever known I'd stay in the garden with him though the night around me be falling but he bids me go through the voice of woe his voice to me is calling and he walks with me and he talks with me and he tells me I am his own and the joy we share as we tarry there none other So now time in worship where we come before God, we take some time to um, repent. It's a hard word, but the word simply means to turn back, to turn our faces back to God. God who's always loving us, who's always there with us, who's always waiting for us to come back and say, ah, I forgot about you, I'm sorry. Please be with me again, God. I know you never left me, thank you. So in this time in our prayer of confession, that's what we're offering our hearts to God. We're recognizing we're human beings. We make mistakes. But God, God loves us anyway. So let us pray. God of love and grace, you know the secrets of our hearts. We can so often be blind to our own faults, yet harsh in judging others. 
We can so often be quick to get what we need, yet slow to give for others. We can even be seeking praises for our successes while grudging praise for others. Oh God, remind us to trust in your tender care, your love unfailing. God, please forgive all the ways that we have broken our relationship with you and with one another. Help guide us onto right paths that lead us home to you, to a life lived according to your way. We confess these things and ask for your forgiveness in the name of Jesus, who showed us how to trust in your goodness. Amen. And let us take a time in silence, just for a moment, to lift up anything that's heavy in your heart this morning and offer it to God. You don't have to carry it anymore. God's waiting to take that load from you, to let your burdens be lighter so that you can continue to love and serve God in the world. Let us pray. Amen. No matter where we are, no matter who we are, God is here. God is with us. No matter what we've done, God loves us. No matter how reluctant we are to accept God, God has already accepted us with that assurance. Receive forgiveness, receive love, receive mercy, and live in the fullness of that hope. Amen. Amen. So I have a kid story. So the kid story that I chose this morning is, um, I chose it because you know what? It was my favorite story when I was sick when I was a kid. My mom can attest to that. I love this book by Dr. Seuss because it had all kinds of funny things that you could find in the pictures. And so this is a time if you've got some kids to gather them up, they might not want to watch the whole thing because you know, it's church. Um, but this time um, I'm gonna share a story. It's called Wacky Wednesday. All right, let me see. And here we go. Wacky Wednesday by Dr. Zeus, writing as Theo Lesig, illustrated by George Booth. It all began with that shoe on the wall. A shoe on the wall shouldn't be there at all. Then I looked up and I said, oh man. And that's how Wacky Wednesday began. I looked out the window and I said, gee, more things were wacky and I saw three. I went down the hall and I said, hey, three more things were wacky today. Hmm. I'll have to look for the other one later. In the bathroom, more. In the bathroom, four. There's a bum. <laughs> I began to dress. Then I said, wow, four more things are wacky now. Hi, Ayla. Hi, Sarah. Oh, hi, Jackson. Hi, Isabel. I looked in the kitchen and I said, bye, cracky. Five more things are very wacky. <laughs> There's a mouse chasing a cat. And then seven more. There's a guy with a hat on and he's walking the car. There's no telephone pole. All kinds of things are wacky now. And the Sutherland sisters, they looked wacky too. They said, nothing is wacky around here except you. But look, I yelled, eight things are wrong here at school. Nothing is wrong, they said, don't be a fool. I ran into school, I yelled to Miss Bass, look, nine things are wacky right here in your class. This guy is backwards, she's got roller skates on, there's a shoe on the desk, that guy's even missing his head. There's a lot wrong in that picture. 
Nothing is wacky here in my class. Get out, you're the wacky one out, said Miss Bass. I went out the school door. Things were worse than before. I couldn't believe it. Ten wacky things more. That, that doesn't belong there. Then I counted eleven. Oh man, that would take us a while to pick all those out, hey. Then twelve worse things. I got scared and I ran and I ran and knocked over Patrolman McGann. I'm sorry, Patrolman, that's all I could say. Don't be sorry, he smiled, it's that kind of day. But be glad Wacky Wednesday will soon go away. Only 20 things more will be wacky, he said. Just find them and then you can go back to bed. Maybe when you watch this later, your adult can pause it and you can see if you can find 20 wacky things in that picture. Whew, wacky Wednesday was gone when I counted them all and I even got rid of that shoe on the wall. The end. So why did I read you Wacky Wednesday? Well, things are a little bit wacky right now, aren't they? You can't have play dates with your friends. You're not going to school after March break. All of these things are a little bit wacky. But we're doing all of these things. We're staying in our homes. We're staying away from each other to help each other so that we can stay safe. There's um, a germ that's going around that um, we're not really sure what to do with yet. And so uh, it's like the flu, but a lot worse. And some of you know it's called coronavirus or COVID-19. And so it's turned the world just kind of wacky right now. And none of us are really doing everything that we're supposed to be doing. Everything's a little bit unusual. And that can be a little scary. And I want you to know that it's okay. It's okay to be a little scared. All of us are, aren't we? And so the comfort that we take is that we're not alone. Even in our houses, when we're all alone with our families, we're still not alone. And even if you're all alone in your room at night, you're not alone. God's with you. God is with you. And at the beginning of worship today, I lit a candle that reminds us that the light of God, all the things that make you feel love and happiness and joy, that's God inside of you all of the time. And so, Wacky Wednesday might be a wacky couple of weeks for us. I want you to know that in this next couple of weeks that people are working really hard behind the scenes. When I was a kid, there was a wonderful, wonderful guy on television named Mr. Rogers. And he said one time when he was scared, when he was little, his mother told him, don't be looking for all the things that make it feel scary. Look for all the helpers. And there are so many helpers right now. People working in grocery stores to keep us in food. Our paramedics and doctors and nurses and scientists are all working really hard to get us back into our normal routine again. And so I want to take some time with you to pray for them now. Will you repeat after me? All right, let's go. Dear God, we pray for all the people who are helping. God, we pray that you help us to not feel so afraid, that you let us laugh and play, be good to each other, get lots of rest, enjoy the sunshine, and remember that you always love us. Thank you, God, for being with me all the time. Amen. And now is the time in church, if we were in church, I'd say, and off to Sunday school, and we would sing a song, and off we would go. Um, I don't have a song for you today, because I couldn't find one in the public domain, but I encourage you to put on a song that you love, and go and sing it, and go and play, and have a really good time. You older kids can certainly stick around, and, um, and hang out, and listen to me sing some songs without any piano accompaniment, and have a sermon, and some more prayers. You're all welcome to stay. All right, thank you. So as I said earlier, um, I'm going to have a sip of tea. Um, as I said earlier, the psalm is Psalm 23 today. 
and I'm going to sing it first um, in, um, in, a, in a public domain version by William H. Harvigal from 1846. That is definitely in the public domain. Um, I do read music. I don't know this one, and so I have been working on it a little bit since last night. Uh, but if you know it, if you're a musician you know it, just, just pretend you don't, because I'm going to take some license with how I put the tune together, because I couldn't quite get my head wrapped around it. So, I hope you enjoy this, uh, this song. This is Psalm 23. The Lord's my shepherd, I'll not want. He makes me down to lie. In pastures green he leadeth me, the quiet waters by. My soul he doth restore again, and me to walk doth make. Within the paths of righteousness, e'en for his own name's sake. Yea, though I walk through death's dark veil, yet will I fear no ill. For thou art with me, and thy rod and staff me comfort still. A table thou hast furnished in presence of my faults. My head thou dost anoint with oil, and my cup overflows. Goodness and mercy all my life shall surely follow me. And in God's house forevermore my dwelling place shall be. Now I'd like to read to you from uh, another version. So that is, uh, includes a lot of the language from the King James Version of the song, Psalm, uh, which is a song, a song of David. And so I'm going to read from the New Revised Standard Version. Uh, may God add to our understanding the reading of these holy words. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside the still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his name's sake. And even though I walk through the darkest valley, I fear no evil, for you are with me. Your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely, goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. The word of God for the people of God. Together we say, thanks be to God. Won't you pray with me? <laughs> Holy One, may the words that I speak reach the hearts that need to hear them. May the thoughts that I share inspire all of us to think on you. And may all of us, wherever and whenever we are, remember that we are held by your grace, by your mercy, by your love, as we listen to your word today and when we go from here. Amen. Don't panic, just a little cold. Okay. <laughs> so... Uh, sometimes, sometimes the scriptures that we come to in the Revised Common Lectionary, that's a three-year cycle of reading through the Bible that many churches and pastors and preachers and ministers around the world uh, check in with each week to see what the readings are going to be. And so we, um, we go to it and there's a Hebrew Bible reading, there's a psalm, there's a letter, and uh, usually one of the Gospels. And so leading up to... Um, Leading up to my vacation last Saturday, I prepared all of my worship services 
to Easter and um, and all in between. And so I picked out the one one scripture from each of those four readings that I thought we'd use each week, and they were the Gospels. And so the Gospel was to be uh, a Gospel from John today, and, and so um, that was what was going to be preached by Linton Whirl, who was going to be in the pulpit this Sunday. But things change. On Thursday morning, I woke up with a really, really uh, heavy feeling in my heart and prayed on it. And the spirit said, get back to work, girl. And so I said, okay, back to work I go. And so I started to read and prepare for Sunday in addition to doing all the other contingency things that needed to be done. And uh, I was so grateful to read the scripture and uh, the readings and see Psalm 23. Because Psalm 23 could be preached this week. Sometimes we read those passages and they don't seem to really fit what's going on in the world. And we look at them and we think, what am I going to do with this? But Psalm 23, not one of those times. Psalm 23, many of you know, is that psalm that is read so often at the end of life during the celebration of life. Because I think sometimes it's the only passage that people recall. That's no accident. Psalm 23 is a psalm of substance, it's a psalm of comfort, it's a psalm of remembrance, it's a psalm of thanksgiving. It's a psalm that we can all sing. It's one that we know. What better song to sing at a time like this than that? The Psalm of David is call, also called the Divine Shepherd because in it, David um, is speaking as though he's a sheep. And the Lord is his shepherd. You heard it. The Lord is my shepherd. And while I was writing this reflection, my dog, Miss Lucy, who some of you know, was at my feet. And I laughed out loud because I often say to this woolier than woolly, almost white standard poodle, come on, sheep. Uh, because she'll get outside and we'll be, uh, it'll be time to go home and she'll be chewing on a clump of grass or I want her to fetch and I've always thrown the ball and I look behind me and there she's chewing away like a sheep. And she looks like a sheep too and people often tell me I should make a sweater from her. I hope they mean from her coat. Um, but I say that, I say, come on sheep. And so when I was reading this, it, it really made me think, you know, sheep sometimes get a bad rap as being not the smartest of animals. And being a city girl, I, I was under that assumption as well. But preaching in the country for a while has changed all of that. I can tell you that I have heard more than one story about some very intelligent sheep. And I can't help but think of my dear dog in the same way. Standard poodles, you might know are second only to Border Collies in their intelligence. Don't tell Miss Lucy that. She still thinks that she's number one in the smart category. But despite her wild intelligence, she mostly counts on me to lead her, to guide her, to comfort her, to feed her, to clean her, and most of all, to love her, even when she's been a bit mischievous. Like the sheep in the Divine Shepherd, she relies on me for her every need. She wants for nothing. I don't think that makes her dumb at all. I think that it gives her a level of trust that few of us will ever know. What do you think about that? The sheep in the psalm, David, begins by speaking about his shepherd and all the ways he's cared for. He tells us he wants for nothing because he trusts that his every need will be met. He's provided with a place to rest, somewhere to drink, a place to renew even his soul. He's guided along the right paths, along the journey, and even when he and his master have to travel through the darkest valleys, and they do, he's not afraid. He's not afraid that anything's going to get him. What do you think about that? Do you know why? Well, you don't have to wonder, because right smack there in the middle of that psalm, he tells us, he says, because you are with me. At that part in the psalm, he switches from talking to his master to speaking, or speaking about his master, my Lord is my shepherd, to speaking to his master, because you are with me. The rod and the staff that the shepherd carry comfort him. That rod that's used to protect and to uh, ward off um, enemies and, and uh, things that want to attack the sheep. And the staff that's used to pull that sheep out of some brambles and bushes if, bushes if it gets a little trapped up. You know, things that could be weapons in another's hand, not to the shepherd, not to the sheep. He finds great comfort in all of those things. 
So this analogy of the sheep and the shepherd starts to bring us to another analogy. So from the shepherd being guided by, or the sheep being guided by the shepherd, we are now guided to a table where we are an honored guest, where he is an honored guest. He says, you prepare us a table before me and my enemies. I love that. He anoints his head with oil. These are things you would only do for the most honored of guests at your table. Some people think, and, and I've read this a few times in, in when I was doing the research for this time and times before, that preparing a table between uh, before me and my enemies is so that I can eat in front of them and, and they can see how victorious I am. It's not the God I, I, I recognize, but the God I recognize speaks to me through some of the other readings that I've done that say, God has prepared a table before me and my enemies so we can sit together, so that we can sit together in peace and be reconciled with one another. Finally, here in the place before God, this is where we can do that. And that reminds me so firmly of the times when Jesus prepares a table for us the table of Holy Communion, where we come together to be reconciled with God and with one another. I'll come back to Jesus in a minute. It always comes back to Jesus. But for right now, I want to get back to David. The trust that David puts to know that God is going to lead him to a table of peace and reconciliation continues in that final verse. When he makes the ultimate exclamation of trust that all will be well, he says, surely Goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever. David's writing this poem. David, who's later King David, is writing this poem when he is running away. He is, uh, on, on for fear of his life, running away from King Saul, uh, who wants to kill him. But David writes this, he trusts in God so much right now that he trusts that God is his shepherd. He will always keep him safe. The rod and the staff, they comfort him. They will pull him out at times of trouble. And God is always with him. And eventually, God's going to lead him out of this time. He's going to bring him to a table with his enemies where they can eat together, where they can be together, where they can love as God would have them love. Right in the middle of that poem. He tells us everything we need to know about why he trusts in God that much. Well, the Psalms are the Hebrew Bible, written long before Christ. When David says, for you are with me, so many of us who see Jesus Christ as Emmanuel, as God with us, hear that in that moment. For Jesus is with us. For God is with us. We believe that Jesus is God with us. God come to be with us. And in that time, that's what we hear. That's why I sang at the beginning of worship today. And hopefully you sang with me if you know the verse. O come, O come, Emmanuel. We sing it at Advent to invite God with us to come into the world again in Christmas. We are learning so much new vocabulary right now. And we have to remember that God is with us in these times of worries and fears. We can call on God to come be with us like we did at Advent. We can call on God to come be with us at this time of Lent, this time of repentance, and now this time of crisis and concern in so many of our lives. We're learning new vocabulary all the time, like social distancing and flattening the curve and being daily inundated with the, the numbers of rising infections and the death tolls from across the globe. We are walking in the valley of the shadow of death. We are walking in the darkest valleys right now for some of us. Some of us have lost our jobs. Some of us are working way too much to make up for others. Uh, that, that can't get to work right now. Some of us are working from home. Some of us are stuck inside all alone. This is a hard time right now, but my friends, we don't walk it alone. God doesn't say, don't notice that it's dark. He doesn't say that. At no point does Jesus say to us, just don't worry about it. It's not dark. No, he says, it's dark. But don't be afraid because I am with you. I'm right here. Like my dog who always turns for me for comfort, like the sheep that always go to the shepherd, like David that always turned to the Lord, and like Jesus who followed God with so much trust all the way to the cross and the empty tomb. 
We are to take comfort that God is always with us, that we are not alone, even in our isolation, even in our sickness, even in all of the ways that we feel afraid and lonely right now. God is with us and we will walk with God through these dark nights all the way until we come to that beautiful table when life sorts itself out again. But may we be changed. May we find this time of rest and relaxation for some of us, uh, this time of upheaval, but this time, may we look for the helpers. Like I said to the kids earlier, that wonderful Mr. Rogers saying, may we look for those times and let those things change us. Let them come into us and make us come to a table before our enemies, before those that we may not have gotten along with before in a different way. Some of us would love to be with anyone right now. Enemies or not, to sit together, to eat together, to play together, to talk together, to hug each other. It's coming, friends, it's coming. But for now, we are walking in dark days and nights and God is with us. And God is walking with all those on the front lines too. God's walking with the paramedics. God's walking with the grocery store clerks. God's walking with the gas attendants and the firemen and our 911 operators, our bus drivers. God is with all of us. And on the other side of this, we will sit at an abundant table of peace and reconciliation and perhaps live in a whole new way that's a little bit closer to God's kingdom on earth as it is in heaven. Wouldn't that be amazing? for this to come through to be a new and beautiful way in the world. But we have to trust for the Divine Shepherd to lead us. The way of the world, the way that it's done things, got us here. The world wants us to hoard. God wants us to share. The world wants us to blame. God is calling us to let go. The world wants us to be afraid. God is calling us to trust. The world wants us to hate. God is calling us to love. Greed and blame and fear and hate aren't going to get us anywhere. We know that now. But my friends, I can tell you that generosity, mercy, trust, and love will take us wherever we need to go. So I say, come on, sheep. Come on, sheep. It's time to go home. Let's get back on the path that God intended for us, the path that the shepherd is leading us on. You coming? No, don't actually go anywhere. We're not supposed to leave our houses. Seriously, stay home. It's okay. But in your heart, are you coming? May the God who loves us, the shepherd who leads us, and the spirit who gives us the courage that says, come on, it's time. Lead us through this dark valley together. Hmm. Amen. So, let's say our new creed together. Those of you that know it, um, say it with me. If you don't know it, I'm going to have all kinds of links to all the things I talked about today on the video after the fact. So you can you can link through and find a copy of our new creed. A new creed in the United Church of Canada is written in 1968. Not so new, but it's way newer than the Nicene Creed or the Apostles' Creed. But it takes a lot of those statements of faith and it pulls it into one of the ways of the United Church that we express our faith out loud. This is a faith statement of the United Church of Canada. We are not alone. We live in God's world. We believe in God who is created, who has created and is creating, who has come in Jesus, the word made flesh to reconcile and make new, who works in us and others by the spirit. We trust in God. We are called to be the church, to celebrate God's presence, to live with respect in creation, to love and serve others, to seek justice and resist evil, to proclaim Jesus crucified and risen, our judge and our hope in life in death and in life beyond death God is with us we are not alone thanks be to God so I'm gonna get you to do something right now that might feel a little weird um, in worship we always pass the peace and in the last few weeks, uh, before we, we knew what we knew uh, we, we were you know hitting elbows or uh, doing namaste 
But in the Gospel of John, chapter 15, verse 12, Jesus says, Love one another as I have loved you. So you are to love one another. So I say to you, the peace of Christ be with you. And those, oh, I heard it, and also with you. But I want you to take a moment, uh, if there are people with you, to say to them, may the peace of Christ be with you. They can re-say back to you and also with you, or they can say it to you, the peace of Christ be with you. If there's nobody with you, please say it to me. But also, I invite you to um, just take a moment and quiet and think about all of the people, all of the neighbors, all of the people everywhere that you want to offer the peace of Christ to. Let's take a moment together and offer the peace of Christ out into the world. The peace of Christ be with you. The peace of Christ be with you, indeed. So now it's time in worship. I really went with the, the liturgy that we usually use in worship in the order of service. And so I thought, hmm, now's the time for our offering. And so today our offering is not about money, of course. Um, although I can, if you regularly go to church, whether it's my church or another church, I encourage you, if you can, and times are tight, but if you can, to put your, your offering aside and be ready to donate it when the time comes. But for now, it's not what it's about. Today's offering is about making a commitment to somehow offer something. Um, something of yourself, a kind gesture, a kind deed, a caring word, a phone call to a neighbor, uh, some way of saying to your neighbor and your communities that I care. I care. Take a moment. If you have a piece of paper, write something down, something that you commit to do in the coming week that is your offering of being God's um, hands and feet and voice in the world. What is it that you're going to offer? If you don't have paper right with you, um, I'll invite you to just hold your hands out and imagine that thing. If you do write it in paper, put, your, put it, your paper in there. And we'll take a moment, and in just a moment, we'll, we'll offer that with a prayer of dedication. So let's offer that with a prayer of dedication, this thing we're going to offer into the world to be God's hands and feet in the world. In the name of the Spirit of Jesus Christ, we bring our gifts to you, O God. Help us to give them with a ready mind and a joyful heart. We offer these things to you and to those you love. Amen. So, guess what? The doxology that we all know, that some of us know, is in the public domain. Uh, it is with the traditional words that I don't usually sing, um, but the, the new words are copyrighted in our Voices United, so we're going to sing it the old-fashioned way. Some of you are going to love that. So here we go. It's Praise God to Whom All Blessings Flow. Sing it with me if you know it. Praise God to... Let's start again. Praise God from whom all blessings flow. Praise Him, all creatures here below. Praise Him above ye heavenly host. Praise Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. Amen. So the prayers of the people, I've shared this a couple of times, but for the, I haven't prayed it out loud. I'm going to pray the prayer that uh, Right Reverend Richard Bott shared with us on Facebook. He's the moderator of the United Church of Canada. He's our spiritual head of the church right now, and has been an incredible leader in this time of crisis and concern, helping us as colleagues. And, and I'm also going to be sharing, he's got a Sunday morning worship as well, so that link will also be on that uh, on our website. And I encourage you to watch, watch worship all week. All my colleagues uh, across the country are, are or not all of them, because some of them don't need to and some of them don't have to, but all that are inspired to, to use this gift of, of technology um, and are able to use this gift of technology have been recording. Some recorded in advance in their, uh, in their sanctuaries and some of them have recorded in their homes live, like me this morning. We're all doing it in a different way. And so um, this prayer this morning is coming from uh, Right Reverend Richard Bott. So if you'll take a deep breath. You close your eyes, hold your hands as you hold them in prayer, and pray with me. 
in this time of COVID-19, we pray. When we aren't sure, God, help us be calm. When information comes from all sides, correct or not, help us to discern. When fear makes it hard to breathe and anxiety seems to be the order of the day, slow us down, God. Help us to reach out with our hearts when we can't touch with our hands. Help us to be socially connected when we have to be socially distant. Help us to love as perfectly as we can, knowing that perfect love casts out all fear. For the doctors we pray, for the nurses we pray, for the technicians and the janitors and the aides and the caregivers we pray, for the researchers and theorists, the epidemiologists and investigators, for those who are sick, and those who are grieving, we pray. For all who are affected all around the world, we pray. For safety, for health, for wholeness. May we feed the hungry, give drink to the thirsty, clothe the naked and house those without homes. May we walk with those who feel they are alone. And may we do all that we can to heal the sick in spite of the ep epidemic, in spite of the fear. Help us, O oh God, that we might help each other. In the love of the Creator, in the name of the Healer, in the life of the Holy Spirit that is in all and with all, we pray. And together, God's people said, Amen. And we pray all of our prayers that we've prayed today in the name of Jesus who taught us how to pray, saying the prayer of Jesus in whatever way that you pray it. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. Forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For yours is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The closing hymn today is God Be With You Till We Meet Again, written in 1880. <laughs> so if you know it, I invite you to sing along with me. Um, and so here we go. Closing hymn, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. By his counsels God uphold you. With his sheep securely fold you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet. Till we meet, till we meet, God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. Neath her wings protecting hide you, daily manna still provide you, God be with you till we meet again, till we meet, till we meet, till we meet at Jesus' feet, till we meet, till we God be with you till we meet again. God be with you till we meet again. When life's perils thick confound you, put God's loving arms around you. God be with you till we meet again. Till we meet, till we meet, till we meet. 
Jesus feet till we meet. I lost you for a moment, but it did keep recording. So our closing blessing, go forth remembering who you are and to whom you belong. And paraphrasing a little bit from Philippians 4, which I used earlier in the week, in Psalm 23 from today, don't be afraid to sing. Don't be afraid to dance. Be kind and compassionate to everyone that you interact with in the coming days. Take heart. Do not be afraid. But through prayer and meditation and gratitude, put your trust in God and want for nothing. Because God will take care of everything you need. God is with us all. And now may the peace of God that surpasses all understanding go with us as we go from here and keep our minds on Christ. Christ Jesus, our shepherd, who's always with us. So go now in peace. Love you. I love you so much, and thanks so much for being here with me today. I've seen so many of you. Um, I always, I, I'm not going to say hi to everybody because it feels a bit like the romper room, which always makes me laugh, so maybe I should. Um, but anyway, uh, hi to Sherry and Wendy and Lino and Wen, uh, Adrian and Susan and Vanessa and Taryn and who else do I got on here? Wendy and Allison, Jennifer and Jen, Kay and Sherry and Sherry and Ruth and Bill and Eunice and Christine, so many of you. Thanks for being live with me, and thanks for all of you that have been watching. Please come uh, every day at 10 uh, for a re reflection, and every evening around uh, 9.30, 10 for a closing meditation relaxation to help prepare you for sleep. Thanks so much, you guys. Have a wonderful day. Get outside. Stay away from each other, but get outside. It's a beautiful, beautiful day. Nature is calling. Okay, love.